Hello everyone, I am Phoenix from Maine, and this is my review of the Have and Have Nots. The show is finally back. We've waited all these months, and the question is, was it good? Or was it some fuckery? So, I am pleased to announce that the show was actually pretty good. Um, it did drag, but based on the return, I'm okay with that. Um... Basically, I'm going to, I don't have a whole lot of notes because, you know, on the have and have nots, they drag this shit out. So, they have long ass scenes. They don't do like normal shows and flip back and forth between characters. Instead, we get long ass scenes from each character. So, it started off with Candace and Jeffrey. Um, and Jeffrey's reaction to Quincy, he basically freaks out. Um, and, I mean, I can understand. You kill a motherfucker in that way where you stab him the fuck up under whatever fuck circumstances, then you would expect to be a little freaked out. Um, what originally made me just kind of shake my head was when Candace was like, you know, we can't tell, <laughs> we can't call the police. You know, and I'm like, dumbass bitch, what the fuck are you talking about? It was clear that this is a known felon, very violent. He assaulted, you know, people in the hospital, um, the social worker. He's assaulted her. He has a history of violence. And it wouldn't be a long stretch of the imagination with her having bruises on her face and, and you know, both of them having defensive marks and wounds and shit like that, that... It was obviously self-defense. However, I will give it to them when they said that maybe it was just overkill. If they were white, no offense to nobody, then they probably could get away with a little overkill. And case in point is, what was it, the, the lady who killed the Olympian? Where she damn near decapitated him, she stabbed him. She shot him. She went through all this shit. And people were still like, you know, um, well, maybe she was just scared. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about. You know, she was blonde and pretty. So, you know, people were trying to give her a pass. I think she still went to jail. But, you know, people were trying to give her a pass. So I can kind of go with, you know, how many times did you stab him? Did you stab him three times or did you stab him 40 times? So I'll give that part of the storyline a pass. Um, then we have the Harrington's and the Criers. They're all going through the process that it takes to go to jail. You got to get rid of your jewelry, your shoelaces, your, your everything. And basically, we still... The only one... Well, there's a bunch of problems with the have and have-nots. But one of the major problems with the have and have-nots is that it drags the shit out so... A person's in a coma for an entire half a season, and they're like, oh, it was like two days. So, you know, we're sitting there with Catherine and um, <clears throat> Veronica, and Catherine still doesn't know that Veronica had her son raped, and there is no reason on God's green earth why Jim wouldn't have told her by now. So, so she at least knows what the fuck's going on. I don't understand why he would just keep that from her. Um, and let her be friends with the woman who got her son raped. So, <clears throat> so basically it broke it off into the two segments where you got Jim and, um, David, and I have a note here, David's still being a pussy, but they have Jim and David, and David's begging Jim, like a little bitch, to stop, you know, whatever it is you're going to do to my wife. He's still trying to protect her. They have this big old debate about love. You know, you never knew what it was like to really love a woman, you know, and, and, and Jim's like, you know, yeah, you know, my dick knew, and then, and then he's like, well, you loved your kids, and then, you know, Jim's like, yeah, and I love, them, love, her, love her more in death, so, you know, Dave is like, I will be the worst enemy you have ever met in your entire life if you do something to my wife, and Jim's like, yeah, bitch. Get ready, because I'm going to do some shit to your wife. Um, and David seems to know that he probably does have a hit on his wife. 
yeah, Jim does have it on his wife, but he don't know that yet. He's just kind of assuming based on their friendship and past history. Um, meanwhile, you know, uh, Veronica's already trying to plot and scheme and figure out a way out of this, which, of course, she should do. And she becomes Catherine's lawyer so they can talk freely, um, which is kind of stupid because you're in jail, you're surrounded by people, and everybody's listening. And, um, you know... Uh, Catherine being stupid is saying, well, you did this with the car and, and Ranga's like trying not to say shit. Like, no, I didn't. You know, what are you talking about? My son's my client. It would have implicated him. Blah, 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 blah. So, um, an interesting thing in the, in the scene for next week, we got Catherine doing the same thing David did in this episode, because, you know, having him nice can be a little repetitive. And we got, um, Catherine saying, if something happened to my son, you know, nowhere on earth will anybody be able to hide from my wrath. I'm paraphrasing. That's kind of sort of what she said. And um, I read a spoiler that said that in this season, Catherine's supposed to be, like, out of control. Like, her wrath is out of control. So, hopefully that would be a good, you know, payoff between her and Veronica. That, you know, she's finally being like Jim and doing shit to protect and defend her family. An interesting thing happened in this episode also. Um, Jennifer, the DA, was talking to Wyatt about his money and how his family was able, because he was on drugs, to keep his money from him. But she's like, well, I know a way that you can still get your money. I'm like, Jennifer, are you trying to fuck Wyatt? But Wyatt... You know, he's been trying to get in contact with Jeffrey. Jennifer's been trying to get in contact with Jeffrey. He's trying to seal a deal on this case. And Wyatt's, like, so fucking excited that, you know, oh, shit, <laughs> I might actually be rich. And um, she said that she should be able to give him some emergency money. If not his whole inheritance, at least some emergency money. And then um, I have another scene here with Benny and Hannah. Now, Benny and Hannah, motherfuckers was getting on my nerves because Hannah is like um, Florida on the good times. I was through with good times when JJ found $10,000 in, in, in fucking Florida was talking about, we can't keep this money, this evil money. We can't keep this. You know, God don't want us to have $10,000. Bitch, please, I'm from the fucking hood. We find ten fucking thousand dollars that money is spent. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even a fucking savings. That shit is spent. Okay. I know my mother. We be having steak. Lobster. Dog, it, now let me say. That is the exact wrong way. To deal with money. But I know that now that I'm older. And I'm able to do things differently. So I can own a house. And own a nice vehicle. And have two businesses. Because I'm not doing what my mother did. When we were in the hood. When we got a piece of money, car accident, something, you know, um, what you call it, uh, uh, you know, um, your your tax money, you know, my mother was always like, oh, now we're going to go to Sam's Club or Costco and we're going to get all this bulk shit, you know, so now we got toilet paper and paper towels for the rest of the year and it's always steak and lobster and shrimp and she always overdid it, overcompensated for us being poor. So instead of saving when we got a little piece of money, my mother would overcompensate by trying to get us things. But I would have to actually get into a relationship with someone who actually taught me about money and was like, that was some ghetto ass shit that your mother was doing, God rest her soul. You know, but she didn't know any better. So when you're in the hood, you're just trying to survive and make it from one day to the next. And sometimes you don't think about a year from now, five years from now. Like now, I think about the future. I don't just think about living from moment to moment. But that was my life for a minute. Sorry, I went on a tangent. Um, but it was because Hannah was being like, I can't be in that house. That's an evil house. And Benny's like, shit's paid off. Candace legitimately brought me, no matter where the money came from, a towing company. I got some friends. We're getting together. We're going to make this money. I should be able to make enough. You know tow drivers make a lot of fucking money. So I should be able to have enough money to be able to 
um, pay for the house, you know, the mortgage, and I think Candace paid the house off too, and Hannah's like in a hotel, in a motel, and she don't have any money, and she's with the kid, and he's like, the social worker is looking for you, if you don't have a stable home, he's going back into foster care, so what are you going to do, what is your pride going to have you doing, so do you believe in Jesus so strongly that you would rather have this kid thrown into the, to the foster care system, because you feel like you're doing the right thing instead of doing the hood thing, which is saying, God made you a fucking way. You need a house? Bam, bitch, there's a house. How you got the house? But fuck it, you got a house. You can protect this kid. The money might have been dirty, but now we cleaning this motherfucking shit up. You don't deal with the hand you want. You deal with the hand you got. <laughs> so, I'm, so, and I'm saying this to say that Benny is not saying that he wants to continue criminal activities. You know, he's saying, this is some legitimate shit we can do now. Let's do this. Now, maybe if Benny said, well, let's take 10% of, <laughs> of the money I make from the tow company and, and put that in tithes, then Hannah might have been like, well, maybe. Okay. You know, but based on the storyline, it looks like she's going to bring the kid to the house because it is the right thing to do. It may not be the best thing or the most ideal situation, but God damn it, you know, what the fuck else you going to do? Be going to shelter and then have a kid taken away? Last was um, Jeff. Oh, Jeffrey, such a pussy. You know, I'm sorry, but you got this dead body. You can't go to the police. What the fuck are you going to do? Um, okay, so is there an axe anywhere around here? <laughs> you know, because that's what, what it seemed like um, um, Candace was thinking, since Jeffrey pussy ass ain't going to help me move his body, only way I can move it is in fucking pieces. So she probably going to cut the motherfucker up in the pieces, throw them in the trash bags or something. Um, or call the the uh, the gangster guy she, she called for before that she cheated out of money by telling him she had less money than she actually did. Um, so, I forgot his name, Chaos, or some, some shit his name is, War, whatever fuck his name is. Um, but I saw a preview that he's supposed to be a bigger character in this season. So, I don't know if he's going to be in a bigger character, if he's still going to be helping her, or is he going to find out she had more money and be pissed and be a bad guy? Who knows? But, I mean, this is just the first episode of the season. But I will have a note. Oh, and Jeffrey, in the very beginning of the episode, called the police, you know, and she basically threw his phone and um, destroyed it, put it down um, like the the garbage disposal and and because she's like, they can track they can track the phone. So the police showed up at the door and now they're looking crazy like what are we gonna do now? So um, and they took showers and stuff like that. And I wanna take a note because we all know when Tyler Perry cast these shows, he's more focused on the men than the women because the women look like I mean, Candace is good looking, you know, um, but other than her, um, most of the, Maggie's good looking, and most of the other women, it looks like no attention went into looks, you know, you got a couple of good looking women, but usually in a soap, it's the opposite, the, you know, if there's not as much of a focus on the men. Every man on the have and have nots look like they've been to the gym their whole life. David, everybody, you know, they're in shape, they look good, or they were sex symbols in the past, like John Schneider, um, and he's still in shape, you know. And when I saw Wyatt, I said, God damn, this motherfucker been hitting the gym harder, hard as a motherfucker like I'm supposed to be doing. And... Um, I can see, even though Wyatt didn't take his shirt off, his muscles was bulging through his shirt and his face was bigger. It was like a little thicker, so you, he's getting more of that body build. Like before he was like a model build, but now he's getting more of like a body build. And I mentioned that at this last scene because when Jeff, Jeffrey took his shirt off to take a shower, it was like, God damn, we've seen you with your shirt off. We saw his ass and everything. And I'm like... He's twice as big as he was, you know, when they, for the season finale. 
So Jeffrey takes his shirt off, and he's got all these rippling muscles, and, and they're not small muscles. He's bodybuilder muscles. So I said him and the guy playing Wyatt, I forgot his real name, it must be hitting the gym together because they have both doubled in size. I don't know what they're taking, steroids, what. Or if they're just hitting the gym hard and just doing protein and shit. Whatever it is. I ain't trying to put no rooms out there. But whatever it is, they are muscular as, as hell. And that is kind of what you expect from Metallic Prairie Production. The men are always hot and muscular and in shape. And the women, maybe they will be. Maybe they won't. I'm not saying any implications of shit. It's just an observation. Now, hopefully you enjoyed that review, and I'm sure you'll agree with half the shit I said. But, um, join me on social media. Usually I say at the beginning of the episode, but I'm going to have the links to all my social media sites. Well, most of them. I got like 10 of them. But I'm going to have a bunch of the main links so that you can um, enjoy a social media experience with me. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I just joined Periscope and Snapchat and, you know, all these different sites. So, um, you know, come join me. Let's let's do this shit. Shit, I'm like, I'm like on it. I'm like, social media has fucking consumed my life. So, <laughs> benefit from all the posts and stuff I'm doing. I post sexy men, sexy women, you know, um, exercise information. Because I have a gym. I'm a fitness trainer. I have a gym. I have production. I do a lot of shit. And um, I post my productions, you know, promos, and I have my web series, you know, you go to my web, web page and watch my web series. And, you know, I have a lot going on, you know, so join me on Twitter, Periscope, and all these different places. And, you know, let's have some fun. You know, let, let's have some fucking fun. And I hope you enjoyed this video because I enjoyed making it. And I enjoyed the show this week. So hopefully, uh, you know, they'll keep up the pace. Talk to you soon.